Hi, and welcome back to Free For All Friday on Focal Point, AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. You are listening to Focal Point, the home of muscular Christianity on conservative talk radio. I want to dig into this column by Tammy Bruce, a lesbian activist in her own right, calls herself a uh, lesbian conservative. Uh, I want to read uh, a little bit from her column today because she says them, I think, some pretty profound things, some pretty sobering things, and she's saying things as a lesbian activist that I have been saying for years. And so, uh, you know, f- as far as I'm concerned, it's sort of gratifying to get this kind of endorsement or affirmation for some of the language that I have used uh, and and been vilified for it. Now, she's a lesbian. She's, she's, you know, technically ought to be impervious to any kind of criticism from others in the homosexual community, and she's out there saying it. Uh, th- this is from our home state of Idaho. Before we get to that, here are some parents that are, uh, are, are being sent to a penalty box, if you can believe it, if they cheer at a game. In other words, they're going, they're going to a game, uh, and uh, they're having what's called silent cheer day, and the reason they don't want parents cheering is that it would help eliminate some negativity during games. Now, I don't understand that at, at all, how eliminating cheering is going to eliminate negativity or the lack of yelling will eliminate some negativity. You know, I went to a lot of games when I, when, when my son was in junior high and high school in college, you know, and I never heard at that level, I never heard people yelling at opposing players. Now it happens in professional baseball all the time, happens in professional basketball, you know, but I never once I mean, I'm not saying it never happens, but I, I'm saying I never experienced it a single solitary time where our families, the families with our players on the court or on the field, were yelling insults or negative comments directed at players on the other team. It just didn't happen. You cheered, you pulled for your guys, your son, their friends, his teammates. That's what you did. So, But anyway, on this silent cheer day, you cheer. This is in Idaho, my home state, I'm embarrassed to admit. You get sent to a penalty box for one minute if you uh, cheer. Uh, last night, by the way, Son of God premieres today, pulled in $1.2 million last night off to a great start. The other big release of the weekend is an action movie with Liam Neeson called Nonstop. It just pulled in 720000 so Son of God outpacing nonstop by about 500 Gs uh, opening yesterday. Now, I want to talk about uh, Tammy Bruce's column here in the Washington Times. And uh, the, the headline that's given, and this, of course, is given by the editor of the paper, maybe not the one that she would pick, but the headline says, Why the Veto of Arizona's Religious Freedom Bill is Alarming. Now, let me read some excerpts from this. She says this, as a gay conservative woman, so she identifies herself as a conservative and as a lesbian. She is a gay conservative woman, a lesbian conservative, uh, which I think is an oxymoron, but that's how she identifies herself, as a gay conservative woman, because homosexuality is just not a conservative value. But that's how she identifies herself, and so we're going to go with that. As a gay conservative woman, I supported... Arizona's Religious Freedom Bill, which was just vetoed this week by Governor Jan Brewer. I supported it because it embodied the values every American civil rights movement stood for, the freedom to live our lives without being punished for who we are. In this case, it was a bill making sure people of faith would not be forced to violate their religious beliefs in the event someone demanded they do so. This bill was thought necessary because of the emergence of business, large and small, being attacked by the gay left for either espousing Christian values or acting on their Christian faith. And we've been over this before, the photographers and the bakers and the florists. Individuals were being sued for refusing to violate their religious beliefs. Having been a liberal community organizer in my past, I immediately recognized the strategy being employed. This is an effort to condition the public into automatically equating faith with bigotry. Now, this is very, very profound. This is the most profound thing that she says in this piece, that if you watch the left in America, what they are trying to do, and this is where the Southern Poverty Law Center comes in, 
by demonizing the American Family Association and calling us a hate group simply because we stand for religious values. She said, this is the whole thrust of the left, to equate faith with bigotry. If you are a man of faith, you are by definition a bigot. If you are a woman of faith, you are by definition a bigot. So this is a powerfully revealing statement. Uh, the gay left, just liberals in general, want people to automatically equate faith with bigotry. That's her term, and it's a very, very good one. To make faith in the public square illegal and dangerous, you need legal cases and publicity. Voila, suits against small business resting on the notion that acting on genuinely held faith is bigotry per se. Again, there it is. This is the m mindset, the template of the, uh, of the left, of the gay lobby, is they want the public to think that if you act on genuinely held faith, you are a bigot by definition. It's bigotry per se. Under these rules, freedom of conscience is squashed under the jackboot of liberals. I used this term earlier in this week to refer exactly to what gay activists were doing in Arizona. They're jackbooted thugs. That's the phrase that I use. I understand Rush Limbaugh used the word jackboot yesterday again to refer to these homosexual activists. And I just got pilloried and hammered by the left for using the phrase jackbooted thugs. Well, here is a lesbian activist using the same word. The freedom of conscience is squashed under the jackboot of liberals, all in the Orwellian name of equality and fairness. Here, she says, we are dealing not just with forcing someone to do something for you, but forcing them in the process to violate a sacrament of their faith as well. If we are able to coerce someone via the threat of lawsuit and personal destruction to provide a service, how is that not slavery? So here's a lesbian activist saying, essentially, what gay activists in Arizona want to do is reduce Christian businessmen to servitude, involuntary servitude, because they are being coerced into providing a service against their will under threat of lawsuit and personal destruction. She says that's a form of slavery. If we insist, she goes on, that you must violate your faith specifically in that slavish action, how is that not abject tyranny? So not only are you being reduced to servitude, being forced to provide a service against your will, if it also goes against your faith and your conscience, then that is just plain old tyranny. So it's a combination of slavery and tyranny that's being imposed on Christian businessmen in Arizona. Of all the people in the world who should understand the scourge of living under constant threat of losing your life, liberty, or the ability to make a living because of who you are, it's gays. It has been disgusting to watch supposed gay leadership drag young gays and lesbians through an indoctrination that insists that in order to have equality, you, mu you must force other people to do your will, make them betray who they are, and punish them if they offend you. Horribly, she says, the gay civil rights movement has morphed into a gay Gestapo. Again, I'm reading the words of a lesbian activist. The gay civil rights movements have civil rights movement has morphed into a gay Gestapo. Its ranks will now do the punishing of those who dare to be different or dissent from the approved leftist dogma. Now I want to play a sound bite. This is a clip number two, CNN, a couple of years ago. I was on with Carol Costello on CNN, and we had a pretty vigorous exchange over the homosexual lobby. And I talked about her reaction to me on the program, and she talked about my reaction to her. Let's listen. Conversation with a member of the American Family Association, an organization which alleges Mix It Up at Lunch Day is really an effort to promote a gay lifestyle. Listen. The Southern Poverty Law Center, they're out to destroy the AFA and FRC. That makes them the bullying group. That makes them the hate group. They're the ones that want to silence any view that would criticize the normalization of homosexual behavior. And we know from the CDC and from the FDA, not part of the vast right-wing conspiracy, well, that homosexual behavior has the same health risks okay. associated with it. That, that's just not true. I'm going I'm to end this interview now, sir. I'm sorry, because that's just not true. Mr. Fisher, um, uh, Thanks for sharing your views, I guess. Not. Yes, I ended that conversation. His organization believes the event, uh, this Mix It Up at Lunch Day event, has some hidden agenda to promote a homosexual lifestyle. And um, a few days ago, he came after me. 
And homosexual behavior is immoral, it is unnatural, and it is unhealthy. That is a simple, straightforward statement of fact. But for the gay Gestapo, they're going to call that an insult. Now, Carol Costello, she showed you what this looks like. I mean, Carol Costello, when I was on with her CNN, she showed you what the gay Gestapo looks like in action because she cut my water off just as soon as I started to talk about the health risks of homosexual behavior. Well, Mr. Fisher, if that's the definition of the gay Gestapo, then I'm a proud card-carrying member. So there's Carol Costello identifying herself as a proud card-carrying member of the gay Gestapo. Now back to lesbian activist Tammy Bruce. To all the young gays who tweet and email me that this is about equality, I say, how exactly? Forcing someone to do something against their faith has nothing to do with equality for you, has nothing to do with bigotry, and has everything to do with a personal spiritual understanding of right and wrong. In other words, I tell them, not everything is about you. Now, by the way, speaking of gay Gestapo, business owners that have come out, that came out in support of Senate Bill 1062 in Oregon, I, I mean in Arizona, have gotten death threats. Now, they've had to go into hiding. Here's one message that was sent, die you blank, and I hope your children die too, you hateful blank demon. So they use vile and derogatory terms. ADF got similar threats. Other groups have received similar threats. So that is the tolerant left responding to not getting their way. By the way, there's a new Arizona bill now that would protect clergy and judges from being forced to perform gay weddings. Just introduced in the wake of Governor Brewer's, Brewer's veto. Here's hoping that that will be passed and signed into law. No pastor, no judge can be formed to, forced to perform a gay wedding. Back after the news, stay with us.